any way. You know, call it by whatever name you want. If you used any of my voice files to do some Bond crap, well, you know, here's the thing. We'll just do it again. And what happens is the same thing that happened with my original Spacehawk business plan, where I created it, and then the next time I looked at it, within, what, a month or two, you would let somebody else have it. And when you let somebody else have it, they used it on something, and I could read how it was used in underwriting on something else. And that's how I found out who it got used for and what the bond was and what you did with it, which is completely unconscionable and, by the way, has been used in numerous acts of terrorism. While you try to focus on something else, hoping that then you're going to be able to do something with it. And I understand that the tone I have now is different and distinct, but more in resonance with what I just got from reading the first three sentences. You gave this to somebody that's been characterized to be very snarky. Well, I mean, if we didn't do it right, you need to share your superior knowledge with us. And you got that to the Supreme Court, which is pretty much the last three years of the Supreme Court, as far as I've seen, right? That mentality somehow finds a way to get to the Supreme Court, and unfortunately, the Supreme Court responds in kind. Let me just start this off by saying, I believe this case may have been one of the cases um, for which Justice Scalia was murdered. But I also believe the primary reason he was murdered is because of what his dissenting opinion was in Maryland versus King. And I think the convergence of those two matters is actually probably closer to the core of what allowed for the cover-up of his murder and the opportunistic exploitation of the cover-up of his murder since. But this is not going to be specifically about him yet. I'm going to go ahead and read through it, and I will take more notes. Okay, first, something that did not strike me as uh, initially... Um, is this a superior knowledge uh, within a military rank and command structure. A superior is somebody that not only has command authority, but also presumably is responsible for the well-being of a subordinate. And one of the things this can imply is something comparable to uh, what was in fact actually mentioned in my original business plan, the understanding of this not being a cell structure, i.e., the understanding of a decentralization, and I don't say D, I say decentralization, as if to uh, communicate agency of information and an attempt to obscure or otherwise re uh, make as a secret a chain of command in order to potentially in so far as it is understood that there may be some clandestine activities involved or a heightened risk of capture by the enemy, provide a guard against abuse or expropriation that would then jeopardize other people, not only physically in terms of physical safety, because the understanding is that they are military and so they have already agreed to accept a certain level of safety, but to compromise the operational objectives, which may not be about specific individuals, but about specific performance of specific roles. And so the individuals that have access to those roles at given times may not be something that would be considered prudent to share with people in other roles at that time in case they need to be replaced. And so the question then of Thinking of it from that mindset, does then the does the argument hold? You see, now we're in a situation where it's almost as if I'm having this thing that happens frequently, but I'm having it sooner up. A CFC subsequently converted the termination into a less government-friendly termination for convenience and awarded petitioners $1.2 billion. The CFC should not have been allowed to have done that. That should not have been something they had even an option to do. But apparently it happened. When they were going through this process of uh, the reaffirmation, the reaffirmation, the remand, and then the reversals, these different kinds of positionings and maneuvering, was there a change in the actual positioning of the role, not specific individuals, but the role, 
that was identified as being that from which one would acquire the information that was sought. Okay, so now there is an understanding of this differently than the one that was presented last time. Again, to leave the parties where they were on the day they filed suit. Now, if I am correct, at the time that this was uh, written, the, the United States was still an active participant in the Treaty on Open Skies. And one thing it says is the relevant state secrets jurisprudence comes not from a case which deals with government's evidentiary privilege against court-ordered disclosure of state and military secrets, but two other cases, two cases dealing with alleged contracts to spy. And this makes a difference because for one thing, the actual positioning of the United States as a uh, participant in the case has changed from being the petitioner to being the respondent or to being the plaintiff to being the respondent in one case and in another case and, and with the other two the positioning of the respondent or rather the the, the, the defendant or the, the respondent is dove as in the anonymized term of somebody that is so positioned and yet paired with the United States in the comparable position of defendant. So this is not just about the specific legal precedent, but also the positioning of the United States and the understanding of the United States having the uh, authority to file the suit versus the United States having to assert its concept of superior knowledge while it is in the defensive position. So the first thing, my first reaction is, is this a invocation of a conceptualization of the United States being able to identify itself as having superior knowledge if it is in the respondent or defensive role in and within the context of spying? which then calls into question concepts of what it means to spy and who it, it is that would then be the one that is in the position of the uh, uh, respondent. Wow. And then, hence, another question, is there other context under which the United States can assert this superior knowledge uh, claim in the position of the respondent and does it hold up as valid in the position of the superior, or uh, uh, not the superior, but the position of the plaintiff? Can the United States say it is entitled to use a superior knowledge claim in order to promulgate a premise for uh, withholding information based upon uh, whatever the definition is determined to be for spying within that context? And so then the consideration of the uh, recapitulation of it from a concept into a concept of convenience and how the understanding of convenience factors into the justifications for uh, determination of superior knowledge in the various positions becomes very, uh, very important. Now, I'm going to do something that I... Ordinarily wouldn't do, but I'm going to do it anyway. From the case, Martin versus PGA Tour, Inc., 2001. Justice Scalia with whom Justice Thomas joined dissenting. I have provided elsewhere commentary on my review of this dissent. And the reason I bring it up now is because it actually, in another context, gets into a discussion of this uh, power that is being uh, questioned and about the power to withhold information. I'm not going to go into detail here except to say that the thing that brings it up as a reference is this discussing the definition of disability and a provision of something concerning disability or somebody that has acts, uh, is, is disabled um, regarding their participation in a uh, PGA tour and discussions of competition 
versus public use. And I understand it in uh, so far as that specific case, and that's uh, had also relevancy in other matters, including matters that were determining the concept of responsibility for providing for the welfare or the uh, equal access to or by people that did not have the same kinds of abilities uh, that other people had and yet were entitled to have access to things by virtue of their relationship. It brings in a question of, well, in what position is one responsible for the welfare of others?